So what are we doing down here, Eric? We're going after some crawfish. Eric's the master crawdad getter. He's yeah, going to teach uh, me. We'll see. This is our bucket with a bunch of holes in it. So we're off. If life is just a one big waste of time Then why do we have trees, ripe leaves and green grass Legalize herb or kiss mine We should all roll up, smoke up and let it sink in Roll up, cause you don't have to be Jamaican Roll up, then I want to see the treetops roll We have successfully got many crayfish. Almost an entire bucket full. It's gotta be 200, 250 crayfish in there. And we're freezing cold, so we're abandoning the mission. Are you cold? Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna people and they want to smoke. That individuality and real talk. I'm gonna, I'm gonna people and they want to smoke. That individuality and just been keeping these in a bucket with a little running water on them which keeps it aerated otherwise they'll suffocate. So then you can just kind of go in there and eat them whenever you need them. Time for dinner. These little crayfish have just been popping off the tail and then cracking that open to get the meat. This is the good part. And pretty much anticipate that each crayfish is going to be about the size of a shrimp. You're trying to uh, figure out how much food you're going to get. And then these little guys, their claws are so small that I've just been cracking them open like this and then rinsing out the guts. And then I'm going to try and take these and just put them all in a pot and uh, hopefully make some stock out of it. The bigger ones, same thing, crack off the tail, get out your big shrimp. Then I crack open the claws. On the big ones, there's a little bit of meat on the big side of the claw. It's kind of worth getting. Don't forget to use your crawfish shells in your wormery. Because I know crab meal is like one of the best fertilizers around. So this stuff's got to be good for your plants. Plus, plants love calcium. Ooh, that's a strong smell. Yeah, that was a smell like? Rabbit pee. Rabbit pee? It does have a kind of weird smell to it. I heard you have to touch your nose to it to get a really good smell. Right, yeah. Uh -huh. It's both very good and very um, intense. It has a slight, like, shelly taste to it. It's extremely flavorful. <laughs> we'll see how it tastes in the soup. Ready now? Nope. Yep. No. Right. No, I'm actually not doing that. All right, this is my soup that I made with my my lobster bisque. It smells kind of like urine. It tastes 
kind of a little bit interesting and it's probably not worth your time <laughs> looking back at, at at the experience but yeah should just throw your extra carcasses in the armory and call it a day these are the egyptian walking onions i was telling you about so there you can see at the top there's no flowers but they do put off these little shallots which are delicious and you can just put those right back in the ground which is perfect for the apocalypse cool thing too is so you get the onion top and then they put out a little shallot and it goes all over the place and it goes and then it puts out more yeah you can see there's a whole bunch of them here it's funny that during the apocalypse mail continues to arrive especially plant catalogs it's like torture um, but as I was flipping through them, I found this is just very pertinent to the apocalypse. It says, Multiplier onions form a cluster of underground bulbs from each single bulb planted. Once established in your garden, multiplier onions will improve in size and quality, and their bulbs can be replanted year after year. A great food source for the self-sufficient. So, in the apocalypse, it might be nice to have some multiplier onions on hand. I'm definitely getting some when I'm done. I also have some just regular onions that are flowering, and then, I've never grown garlic before. On the inside of these little flower pods where I would think you would have a flower, there's like a whole garlic head right here. It's like the most awesome thing ever. So that's definitely going in with our crayfish tonight. At the end of the year, I'll just be able to take those, put them in the ground, and perpetuate my garlic stash that way. So that right there, believe it or not, is 30 crawfish. It felt soothing to throw some red beans in there too, so this tastes good. The flesh shrimp, same size, same texture, really pleasurable texture compared to uh, eating like normal meat. We got about 250 crawdads, it's like eight nights of dinner. Of course. It takes another three hours to boil them and shell them and then cook them and everything. A couple of these crayfish are a little small, so I think I'm gonna throw them in the pond and we'll see if they can uh, survive there. Maybe they can start farming them. Whoa, whoa, intruder. I bet you didn't know that we have boa constrictors in Big Sur. There he is, Rosie Boa. One of the few things that Fish and Game said that I could actually shoot and eat indiscriminately is ground squirrels. And I've never seen one in my house. And then today, there's one sitting on this rock right here. I can't believe my luck. Let's see if I can get him. This is kind of a special occasion, so I thought I'd open a nice bottle of wine. This is another one of George's bottles, 2010 Cabernet Sauvignon. I think it'll pair nicely with the ground squirrel. You gotta check out this carrot that I found in the greenhouse buried under a bunch of bee leaves. Look at that, man. I actually had to pull this out with a pair of pliers because it's so thick on the bottom it was like wedged in there. Garlic. That's a total game changer right there. The ground squirrel smells good. I am a little apprehensive about eating this though. It's just a psychological thing, I think. Someone trained me that ground squirrel is not food. My first uh, feeling on this is that that actually tastes pretty good. Way preferable to the fox, which was pretty much instantly revolting. I think the soaking helped. I'm sticking by my initial assessment that ground squirrel is quite delicious.
There's something I've never seen before. I was riding my bike up the hill, and in the middle of the road, there's just this salamander chilling. These guys like it where it's wet and dark and dank, not out in the puffy freaking moonscape of the road. Based on religion or a medical prescription Or maybe you like me, see I just like it in my system Twist them, pack them, yo hit it then we pass it Nutritious, plus the fact it tastes so delicious <laughs> I don't know if I'm excited to eat it, but I'm excited to eat something I'm not going to get arrested for eating. That's nearly a whole pickle bucket hey, full of... Look it! I wonder what Come on, put them, put them back in there. Hello! <laughs> I learned something during Zap to see if something is dead, poke it in the eye. Because I don't want to get bit by this guy. And if it doesn't respond, then you know it's dead. <laughs> 